Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm giving you guys my review of the third episode of The Owl House. Now, when it comes to this episode, I um, <clears throat> I liked it. Uh, I didn't think it was perfect. I, um, I thought it was good, but um, there are some things that I thought were kind of, eh, like, I, I don't know about it. But, um, you know, let's just get into the episode. So, we start off this episode with um, Edda, Luz, and King at a beach. And we see that on this beach, there's this thing called a trash slug. Now, apparently, this slug, like, eats up a lot of garbage. And evidently, they um, they end up washed up uh, ashore on the uh, the beach. And Edda uses it as an opportunity to root through the, um, <laughs> like, it's, it's, its corpse to collect all the... Uh, the garbage, and um, I don't know, I mean, t to me, that's that seems kind of uh, disgusting, and also, if this is something that just happens naturally, I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you naturally have, like, something to take care of it, I mean, what if, what if Edda wasn't there, I mean, wouldn't the, um, wouldn't their bodies just keep piling on this beach, and eventually start to decompose, and the whole place would start to smell like, you know, a rotting corpse, but so, I, I don't know, how, I don't know, Anyway, um, as she's doing this, so we find out that Edda, this is something that she likes to do every now and then because you know she she has a um, she has a job where she collects things from the uh, you know the human world, our world, and she use and she uses those things to uh, to sell them in in this world, uh, the boiling aisles, and she um, apparently roots through the um, she roots through the uh, the carcass to find things to uh, to sell. And while she's while she's doing this, we uh, we see Luz, and she uh, she she doesn't like this. She she doesn't want to do this. And even King like calls it out and says, you know, yeah. I mean, what's I mean, who doesn't love just rooting through a uh, rooting for the uh, the carcass of a trash slug? And and it just says, you know what? Just screw you guys. I know what I'm doing. And she starts rooting through it. Anyway, Luz, like the the whole thing with her is that she um. She doesn't like so far what she's doing, and she was kind of hoping that um, that that she'd start learning some some actual magic by now. And to me, when I see this, I think, you know what? Um, we, we don't know how long it's been since Luz first agreed to to stay here. I mean, from their from their pers perspective, it, it could have been like a couple of days, but for us, it's only been. <laughs> like a little while ago, I mean, it's only been two episodes, so to me, I'm wondering, like, I, I mean, isn't this something that they should save until, like, maybe afterwards, I mean, I don't know how many episodes the season's gonna have, I don't know if it's gonna be, like, 12, 13, or if it's gonna be, like, um, like, the typical ep uh, episode in a TV, uh, episode format in a, uh, you know, a TV show, like, 20 episodes, 22 episodes, so I'm wondering if maybe they should save this for, like, the 17th, 16th maybe where she starts to you know get tired of it and maybe that whole story that we've seen probably before where she um you know uh, where, where the character is starting to get annoyed with you know the status quo and then they start taking steps to change things and then those changes maybe uh you know end up having consequences and you, you, you get what i'm talking about you you've seen it before but here they're doing this in like the uh, the third episode, and I don't know. I mean, to me, I'm just it, it feels like they're starting to uh, to rush it, if uh, if that makes sense. So anyway, uh, while they're digging through this, um, Edda says um, Edda accidentally lets it slip. Like, uh, well, um, I mean, so so what? Like, you you, you want to go to some 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 magic school or something? And uh, Luz is, is surprised, and she says, "Wait, so there's there's like an actual magic school?" And Edda says, "Yeah, there is, but you don't want to go there." <laughs> and I'm I'm sitting here wondering, like, okay, is is there a reason why she doesn't want her to go to magic school? Like, does she know something about the school that we don't? And um, we'll we'll get to that. And Luz uh, says, "You know what? You you continue to do this. I think I'm just gonna I'm just I think I'm just gonna head out." And b but before she does, uh, Edda finds this. Uh, they they call it a slime ball, but we find out later that it's actually something else. Um, she gives it to Luz, and she says, "You know what? Use it wisely." And her whole thing is that, 
you know, magic. It, apparently, one of the reasons why she uh, she doesn't like school is because it's all they're trying to teach you like that. There's ma- that when it comes to magic, there's order and you know, there, there, there's an order to it. There's logic to it. But to her whole thing is that magic is supposed to be unpredictable, uncontrollable. And that's why she likes it. And that's what she's trying to teach Luz. Like, she even tells her, like, okay, here, take this little slime ball. And who knows? Like, maybe even this could be useful someday. And she even tells her, like, this whole... Uh, she puts it in her hand, you know, closes her hand and says, use it well. And, you know, that, that, that scene that we've seen in... In other works of uh, fiction before, and she obviously d- dismisses it. She thinks now this is just a little slime ball. It's not, not going to be anything. But she puts it in her um, she puts it in her pocket, and I'm wondering, okay, so you wait a minute, Luce. You you just saw her pull this out of the the, the corpse of a, of a trash slug. Why like th- and this isn't even like it was there on the ground for a while. No, this was fresh out of the corpse, and you just put it in your pocket. I mean, that was that's kind of disgusting. <laughs> So, anyway, um, there's there's that. And anyway, on her way, um, as she's leaving, she's wondering, like, okay, I mean, am I am I really doing anything? Am I learning anything? And as she's um, doing this, she hears something going on, and she walks over to to see what's going on, and she sees like this young witch, and um, she's uh, apparently like she's trying to. Um, to uh, to 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 psych herself up for for something. She's trying to motivate herself, and apparently she's trying to motivate herself to to go to uh, to to school. And apparently, you you get the impression that oh, maybe she's not really doing all that well. And this character, look, if you've seen the opening, then you've already seen this character. She's the um, look. I I know there's no nice way to say this, but. She's what you might call in this day and age the typical the, the archetypical overweight friend. If and that's that's the, the, the nicest way that I can describe it. Like if you if you've seen any modern cartoons that especially from Disney and especially from people who try to push this the, this a certain narrative, you're always gonna have characters who have like the typical uh there's the main character and there's there's the art archetypical insert type friend here and she's the insert overweight friend we find out that she has other typical insert type friend here we'll we'll get we'll get to that character she's we'll, we'll get to sorry excuse me we'll get to the other two characters so we just meet the so we just met the uh, typical overweight friend that we've seen in so see in so many modern works of fiction these days and she her whole thing is that apparently she's uh, she's not very confident, you know, she, she doesn't believe in herself, blah, 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 so she needs self-reassurance, and again, we've, we've seen this before so many times. So, um, we, we see her, uh, like, she's doing the whole usual, okay, like, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, and she accidentally steps on a flower, and she kneels down, and she uses magic to bring it back, and... Keep a note of that. And right as she does this, another student comes in. This is her right here. This is the one on the screen. Uh, she comes in, and she looks at um, uh, and she looks at the character, and which we find out her name is uh, Willow, like the, uh, the 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 typical overweight friend. Her name is Willow, and this character's name is uh, Amity. So Amity looks at Willow, and the way they interact, you kind of get the sense that they know each other. I, either they know each other from school or they've known each other for a while because I got the sense that maybe they know each other maybe they've known each other for a while not just from from school I get the feeling like maybe there's some history there that we might find out later in the uh, the series and she, she look when it comes to Amity like you know how I said when it comes to Willow she's the stereotypical overweight friend or the and that's her character type when it comes to Amity, she's like the typical, and I know there's not, no, no other way to say this, but she's the typical bitch. Okay, she's that character. The, the one who always condescends, talks to everyone in a condescending way. Who, the one who just likes to act like they're better, and then the second another character might outshine them in some way, they start to get pissed. She's, she's that character. So if you've seen that character before, then congratulations. You've already, you, you can already predict what she, um, she's probably going to do in this episode. 
and she um we find out from this scene that she and willow are part of this class uh, part of the class called the abomination class and what that means is that they basically learn how to summon monsters and or more specifically they summon this thing called an abomination and amity obviously being the character type that she is does it perfectly and willow has trouble doing it and willow basically tells her you know this is why everyone calls you half a witch willow because apparently she screws up a lot and she um she tells her that you know what you might as well just give up you know that 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 usual stuff that whole like i'm pretending to be your friend but in reality i'm insulting you and i think you're below me and and all of that i think you're beneath me and all of that stuff again we've, we've seen this before and she leaves, and then Luce walks over to her and tries to help her. And um, here's something happens here that got me thinking. Willow looks at Luce, and she tells her that because of her round ears, that apparently she's human. I, when I saw this, all I could think is, okay, so wait a minute. You're telling me that just because her ears are round, you were able to tell that she's human? I mean, if that's the case, then... Shouldn't other shouldn't the other creatures that she's ever interacted with shouldn't they be able to tell that she's human too? Like if that's all you needed to to discover, if that's all you need to know that, um, like someone's human it's because of their ears. Then all of the other characters who have seen her, they should know. And I still don't get the the idea. Like okay, so are humans like are they banned in this land? Like are they not allowed here or are they? I don't know. I don't know. Again, they 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 don't they don't really make it clear. So anyway, um, Luce looks at her and she says, "You know what? I don't like the way Amity treated you. So how about this? How about if I help you with this? Like I'll pretend to be this abomination creature that you uh, that that you are trying to summon, and in exchange you can get me in to magic school." And all this time I'm wondering, like, okay, wait a minute, can't Luz just enroll in magic school? Like, are humans not allowed? I don't know, I just, again, they, they don't really make this stuff clear. So anyway, uh, Willow just says yes. Despite the fact that she knows that there, that, that there are severe risks, as we come to find out. So Willow takes her in uh, to magic school, and while this is happening... Cut back to the uh, the beach where we see Edda and um, King, and apparently they're having this whole um, uh, this whole argument where King is trying to tell her that she's a bad teacher, and Edda tells him that oh well you you probably can't do it any better than I I, I could, so they agree to make a bet. How about uh, Edda says that if you can train, uh, if you can train this baby trash lug to do whatever you want then I will agree that you are a better teacher than me. And we find out through all of we find out through this that King and Edda have been doing these bets all this time and King's never won a single one. So you would think that okay maybe this is going to be the one but I I think you you can already guess where this is going. Um Uh, and and apparently the uh, the deal is that if King wins, Edda has to wear a shame hat and she has to sleep in a shed. But if Edda wins, then she gets to change his name to Mister Wiggles. And if you if you heard where I if you if you get where this is coming from, then you should already know where this goes. And I'm wondering if maybe in the later episodes they're going to keep this up or if this is just a one and if this is just a one-time thing. Anyway, we'll see. So, cut back to a loose and a willow. So she gets in and in this class um like in this class like this is supposed to be when they like this is supposed to, this is kind of like a final test or um uh something like that. And Amity passes obviously and the other students uh they they uh i'm guessing they pass as well and the last one to go up is uh willow and the teacher says that if this person doesn't get it right then there's the t then there's homework for a month for all of you at least i if, if i'm if i'm remembering this right um 
it's it's something like it. Basically, if if she doesn't get it, the whole class gets punished. You know that that whole thing. And uh, Willow, when she gets up, she does the whole. And apparently, to to how this works is that uh, the witch has to say the witch or wizard has to say, like abomination rise and abomination lie down. And basically, it's it's sort of like a um, it's sort of like a chant. In order for in, in order to to get this abomination creature thing to to obey you, but it sort of sounds like you're commending a a dog. And Willow says abomination rise, and she, uh, like Luce does it. She uh, although her her impersonation of the uh, the creature is pretty bad. Although you can kind of get it because she's never really seen one. Well. At least you would think that, but we saw her earlier in the episode. She saw Amity's abomination. She saw how they act, so she should be able to act like one at least a little bit. But and anyway, all this time I'm thinking, okay, so wait a minute, like Luce, like you've only covered parts of yourself in this purple goo. Like you can still see the rest of your face, so other people should see your face. They should be able to to figure out like how. Like, did no one else think it was weird? I mean, it's just, I, I don't know. It's just, again, this, it's it's weird. It, it, it's, it's a little weird. And Amity is surprised by this because she saw her, she saw her abomination was, for, for lack of a better term, it was an abomination. Like, she failed miserably at making one. So she's shocked that her now she all of a sudden has one and... Look, if you've seen any TV show, then I think you can already guess where the plot of this episode is going. You can already guess what's going to happen with these two. Um, she um, She's surprised, and apparently it was done so well that... Uh, do you see this? You see this this badge? Apparently this is a badge that the top student wears, and it's something that Amity's pretty proud of. And what the teacher does is she, he takes it from her and gives it to Willow and says, Congratulations, you're my new top student. Since apparently she did uh, perform the spell better than even Amity. And Amity, of course, is pissed, and she's um, doubtful. Like, she has questions, and, and rightfully so. She says, Okay, wait a minute. I just saw you in the forest, and your abomination was horrible, and yet now, like... An hour or two later, all of a sudden, it's it's perfect. Like, no, 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 something's going on. And anyway, uh, they meet up with another character um, from the uh, the opening. They meet this this uh, this universe's version of Gordon Goodbrother, and you've you've already seen him. You've already seen him. It's that whole. It's the whole, oh, I'm the nice person, like, I'm just gonna agree with everything. And, and you know, that that character. Although, well, not necessarily everything. He even tries to tell Willow that, hey, like, maybe this isn't a good idea. You know, I, I like, lots of things could go wrong with this if you choose to go through with it. And he's, again, he's he's not wrong. So I don't know. I just I get the feeling he's gonna be that character. He's gonna be the person who just agrees with them on everything, and and all of that stuff. I don't know. Again, we'll see. And apparently, um, they're in the cafeteria, and Luce is just out in the open for some reason. Like I just I I don't I don't <laughs> I don't get it. Like you're not even trying to hide it. And apparently, this guy I I forget I'm forgetting his name. His whole thing is that he has a club that's dedicated just to studying humans. And he even asked Luce, like, do humans eat, like, uh, PB&Js? And I'm wondering, okay, so wait a minute, they have peanut butter and jam in this world? Seriously? I I just, I don't know. Again, it's just these things that make me wonder, okay, how do these, how does this world work? Anyway, uh, she he gives her half of uh, his sandwich and she starts to eat it. And then Amity just jumps on the table and says, I saw that. Like, she tries to call him out on it. And she says, like, listen, abominations don't eat. Like, they don't need to eat. And she basically grabs um, Luz by the collar and starts to shake her and says, okay, who, who are you? What are you? What's going on? And Luz just continues to act like an abomination. 
and one of these abomination creatures. And then the teacher, the same teacher who gave them the test comes in and says, you know what, Amity, I'm, I'm disappointed in you. Like, I, I expected uh, there to be some resentment, but jealousy and, you know, that that whole thing. Uh, yeah, uh, again, like I said, we've, we've seen this before. Anyway, um, they uh, they try to leave. They go to another classroom and then Amity comes back in. With another teacher. Now this teacher. I I don't know who he is. I'm wondering if maybe he's going to be uh, prevalent. In the, uh, the series moving forward. But she. Um, Amity told him what was going on. And he uh, says. You know let, let me let me check it. L let me check. Let, let me check on this and see what's going on. And his whole thing. Is that he wants to dissect her. And I'm sitting here wondering. Oh, okay. I mean, you're you're just gonna show this. I mean, he even pulls out the knife and everything, and give and he even uh, gives it to Willow. Oh, the entire time you can tell. Okay, this guy knows what's going on. He's just trying to get them to um to admit what's going on, and he gives Willow the knife and says, "You know what? Since you created this, you have the honors." And <laughs> there's even this funny joke where Willow like leans over to Luz and says. By any chance, like, you can cut open a human and they'll be fine, right? And Luz is just, she's trying her best to keep herself from, like, stiff as she's suddenly shaking her head. Like, no, no, you definitely can't do that. And I'm I'm guessing it's the same with them. Like, you can't just cut open someone and they'll, they'll live, I mean, unless they're immortal. So, yeah, that, that rule applies to all, all creatures. And, look, I'm just going to call him Gordon Goodbrother for now because, again, I... I'm blanking out on his name. Uh, he says, uh, he calls out to Amity and the teacher and he says, high five. And oh yeah, earlier there was a gag where Luz taught them how to high five someone. And he slaps the uh, the cauldrons that had the abominations. They fall down. They distract Amity and the teacher long enough for Willow to take Luz and to run away. And Amity notices them and says, they're, they're running away. And the teacher says, not for long. And he activates a spell. And we find out that apparently this is like a spell that... I'm wondering if it's just the faculty that they can activate the spell. But apparently it's supposed to be it's supposed to be like a security system that prevents intruders, once they've got in, from getting out. And they do get trapped for a little bit. when And they um, the teacher apparently uses his magic to take control of the abominations. And he sends them to catch... Um, Luce and Willow, and something happens here that again it makes me question things that happen in this in this world. So th they run up to an abomination. There's one in front of them, and Luce just punches it. It punches it and it just disappears, or it like deforms and scatters until it like forms back. And I'm wondering, okay, how how weak are the monsters in this world? How weak is it that a little 14-year-old girl who barely has any upper body strength whatsoever can just punch it and it and it just it it it, it just splatters all over the floor and I just I'm I'm wondering okay so in the previous episode a, a demon could be beat with like this little plastic toy sword and apparently this little girl with twigs for arms can, I'm I'm guessing can barely even lift 5 pounds is all of a sudden able to just punch it with with this with barely any striking any striking strength whatsoever can just beat this monsters like how how weak are these monsters i don't know it's just anyway uh just all right where am i uh anyway uh as they're trying to escape uh they get trapped and Luz is wondering okay like what am i going to do she, uh, she, uh, Willow asks her, like, you don't happen to have anything in your, um, you don't have happen to have anything that I can use. And, uh, Luz, like, digs in, digs in through her pockets and pulls out, like, a bunch of pocket lint. And there's a paper clip there for some reason. Um, and anyway, she notices the, uh, the seed. And Willow tells her, oh my god, that's perfect. She takes the seed, or at least we, we, what we thought was a slime ball, it turns out to be a seed. And she uses her magic... To make it grow, and now this this was actually pretty impressive. This was a, a pretty uh, impressive uh, show of like just how good she is when it comes to uh, magic, or at least when it comes to this kind of magic. 
And she, like, grows all of these vines that not only take out all of the abominations, but is enough to uh, uh, hold off the uh, the teacher. And he's impressed by this. And she tells um, Luce that, like, look, I can't hold hold this forever. And he, she tells her to leave. And Luce tells her, like, I can't just leave you here. And he, Willow, like, she she's making sense here. She tells her, look, the worst that I'm going to get is detention. If you get caught... They're going to dissect you. And Luce agrees and she leaves. And right as she leaves, she um, she l- lets go of the uh, the spell. And Luce runs over to, uh, to Edda to get help. And as they're doing this, uh, Edda is taking care of the... Um, Edda and King are trying to fight off the, uh, the trash slug that... Like, l- let's just say it grew uh, when, when it first hatched with uh, with king and they lost control and they are able to take down the uh the the slug by feeding it salt so apparently salt works on slugs here just like they do in in our world okay and it doesn't kill it it just re- regresses it back to a baby and it just it, it runs away and uh, this is the second time this happened and i'm wondering if the, the only reason they're doing this is because they can't show like a, 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 a anything actually dying in this show because again it is technically a show for kids okay i mean i i don't agree with that but okay and loose makes it over here and um she talks to edda and tells her listen my friends they're in trouble like they 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 need your help and when it comes to edda there's uh remember when i said we find out later that um why she doesn't like uh, school. There was a scene earlier where she um, she asks the uh, the owl in front of the at the uh, the at the the door of the house like where Luz went where Luz went and sh- uh, the the house the the owl points in in the direction and with the um, the uh, the weather um, the weather being that 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 metal thing that you use to uh, to help you determine you know the uh, like let's say when where 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 is the uh, the wind coming from those sort of things and it points in a certain direction and when Edda looks at it and says wait but the only thing in that direction is and she instantly figures out that she went to the um, the magic school and while she was there she looks in on all the classes and says, "Oh my God, <laughs> conforming order." And she says, "Oh my God, she went to school." <laughs> it's just, I I don't know. Okay, so we find out that uh, Edda doesn't like school. Okay, and uh, Luce asked her to help, but right as she d- did this, I um right as she does this, I I don't know how long it takes to get from the school to the owl house. Or Edda's house. I'm, I'm assuming it didn't take that long. But while she got there, her friends show up and say, No, 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 listen, uh, everything's fine. And I even got sent into the uh, the plant class. Since that's where, um, that, since that's my specialty. As we, um, as we saw. And, um, Gordon Goodbrother is there for some reason. I don't know. And... Uh, Lou says, you know what, I cannot wait to go back. And uh, um, Willow says, yeah, uh, about that. You're sort of kind of banned. <laughs> uh, like, she even pulls out a, a band poster on uh, on Luce. And Luce is sort of, like, shocked. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, her her, uh, her dreams basically just shattered. And uh, Edda is proud of this. Uh, she even tells her, Oh my god, like, she even does this whole uh, joke where she says, Oh, it's Baby's first band poster, I'm so proud. And uh, Luz just says, you know what, uh, or, uh, excuse me, Willow and um, Good Brother even offer her and say, Listen, uh, you may not be able to come to our school, but we can come here after school and we can teach you what we learned. And uh, Luz just says, you know what, I, th- I, think, I think I'm okay, I, th- I think I'm okay here. Like, I'm going to continue under uh, Edda. And yeah, so that, that that whole thing. All in all, um, I thought it was uh, I, I thought it was an okay episode. You know, it's it's not it's not perfect. It's not great. It's, I don't know if I'd call it good. It was okay. And again, some uh, some some questions. 
about the, uh, the, the 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 logic of this world. It seems like the creators are really just expecting you to just um, just be okay with everything. And all in all, yeah, again, I thought it would. Uh, so far, we haven't had an episode that's all in all bad. I thought it was okay. It's it's fine. You, you can watch it and you can just in you can enjoy it. I mean, you might have questions, but overall, I think you can enjoy it. And again, this is only like the first three episodes. Like I said in my other, in my first review, this show has potential. I want to wait to see where the show goes. With that being said, uh, I think I just covered everything. So yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you saw this episode and what you thought of it. And again, let me just say this again. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you join me on my next review of episode 4. Bye.